Hello, welcome to the Fail Gamer. This was just on my new on Steam list and I had to download it straight away. There's a reason for that. This is Ian Livingstone's Caverns of the Snow Witch, one of the Final Fantasy series. In fact, it was my favourite other Final Fantasy series. I've read it oh, so many times when it came out and yeah I'm really kind of looking forward to this um, there's two ways it could go either I have the nostalgia of actually doing this or it ruins all my memories of it now it's not that it could just ruin it because I mean the original is such a it's so brilliant anyway I mean if you haven't if you were a fan of the fighting fantasy series and you hadn't read Caverns of the Snow Witch you need to oh that's the original cover as well wow right uh, I wonder what is in extras well I know what the rules are options not very much options right let's just play Okay, so you're the hero, you gotta have dice and food and drink and three difficulty settings. Free read modes. Print version of the game book, we recommend Hardcore Hero. Okay. So, Adventurer. Okay. Oh, do you know what? We're going to play it exactly how he designed it, because he designed it in such a way that it was playable. Okay. So we're going to play Adventurer. So we're going to calculate some stamina scores. So we're going to roll two dice and add 12 to the number rolled. So... Okay, so there's my stamina. Next we're going to determine some skills. This determines how good I can, you know, use my sword and my fighting expertise. So we're going to roll one dice and add six. Oh, not bad. Nearly maximum. Now we're going to do luck. So if you want to do something, then you, you got to have a bit of luck to do it, so... Here's my luck. Oh, fantastic again. The bigger the better. <laughs> so, do I want, oh, I want a potion of, uh, potion of strength to restore stamina points. Yes. Okay. So there's a lot of reading in this. So, if I happen to yawn in the middle, it's not because I'm bored, it's just a lot of reading. Winters in northern Atlantia are always cruel and bitter. The snow falls thick and the icy wind blows hard, chilling everybody to the bone. For the past few weeks you've been hired by a merchant called Big Jim's son to protect his trading caverns as they roll their way slowly north to the frozen outposts. The horse-drawn carts are laden with cloth, utensils, Weapons, salted meats, spices and tea, which are traded for furs and ivory carvings made from mammoth tusks. Big Jim, who's not usually worried about travelling north, has bandits only attack his caverns on the return journey. He is not alone in recognising the value of the northern goods. On this particular trip, you are walking ahead of six carts across a frozen lake in the distance, you can see the snow-capped peaks of the Icefinger Mountains jutting out of low cloud. Your destination lies at the base of the mountains, where the northern, where the Northmen, sorry, meet to trade. Snow is falling, but not too heavily. You stop to prod the ice with your sword to make sure it can bear the weight of carts when suddenly the shrill call of a hunting horn breaks the silence. You stand up and run back to the carts to talk to Big Jim. 
He's sitting next to the driver of the second car, puffing on a long briar pipe. <laughs> oh wow, this is a big introduction. A huge man with a great big bushy beard, Big Jim is obviously a man to be reckoned with. His bright blue eyes scan the horizon, searching for signs of life. In a deep voice, says, Sounds like you came from the outpost. Reckon you better go and investigate. Could be trouble. And get back quick. He settles straight away toward the outpost at the base of the Icefinger Mountains. He arrived two hours later at the scene of ugly carnage. The snow is red with blood and all the wooden huts are smashed and torn down. Six men lie dead, their bodies slashed, their axes at their sides in the snow. Judging by the size of the footprints, the creature that attacked the outpost must have been enormous. There is nothing you could do for the unfortunate Northmen, so you head back towards Big Jim's cavern to report the news. You reach them in an hour, just as the daylight is fading, and relate the terrible events that have befallen the outpost. Big Jim orders the carts to be drawn into a circle to protect his men during the night. A large fire is built into the centre of the circle and you sit down beside it to talk to Big Jim. Everybody is nervous and a guard is posted to watch for signs of movement outside. In a low voice, Big Jim asks you if you will hunt the terrible creature, for otherwise his business will be ruined forever. You smile and reply that you will track the beast, but only for a purse of 50 gold pieces. Big Jim's jaw drops open, and it takes a great deal of persuasion before he agrees to your demand. The snow finally stops falling as you settle down for the night. Sleep is a long time coming, for your mind is active with thoughts of the impending hunt. When you wake just after dawn, the fire is just to dying embers. Whists of smoke rise gently into the morning mist and not a sound is to be heard. You walk over to where Big Jim is sleeping and tap him on the shoulder. He wakes with a start, and you tell him that you're setting off and hope to be back later in the day. You wave to the guard as the snow starts to fall again and make your way back to the outpost. Now, turn over. <laughs> you don't actually need the uh, the page references here, but still, you know. By the time you reach the outpost again, the bodies are blanketed with snow and the beast footprints are covered over. The visibility is poor as you set off towards the mountains where you hope to find the abominable beast killer. Um, the abominable killer beast, sorry. Uh, the snow in the mountainside is soft and you sink in up to your knees as you climb slowly up. You find yourself at the edge of a crevasse which is spanned by an icy bridge. If you wish to cross the crevasse by the icy bridge, turn to 335. If you'd rather walk around the crevasse, turn to 310. The bridge is quite narrow and very slippery. Test your luck. You are lucky. You needed a luck score of 11 and rolled a luck score of 7. So you've also got to get under your luck. If you are lucky, turn to 41. I like how it blocks it off so you can't cheat. You tread carefully over the bridge, safely across the crevasse. You continue your slow trek through the snow. Ooh, some hounds. Using your sword, you cut the hand and toe holes into the side of the cross and haul yourself up. The wind starts to howl, blowing gusts of snow into your face. You put your head down and stride into it. Above the howl of the wind, you suddenly become aware of another sound, the howling of wolves. You draw your sword while trying to peer through the snow. As if out of nowhere, two snow wolves appear in front of you, hunched, ready to pounce. They are completely white except for their blood red eyes. Suddenly one leaps at you. You must fight. Okay, fight on! Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, I hit the first snow wolf. Okay. Stamina... Oh, sorry. Ah, oh, right, okay. Oh, I've done it. Okay. Should hopefully kill him. No. Oh, he's got me. There we go. I've defeated the first snow wolf. Now I must face the second snow wolf. Fight on. 
Oh gosh, we both missed because we. Ah. I don't actually really quite know how I'm fighting, but still. You hit the second snow wolf. I should hopefully hit him this time again, yeah. Ah, oh, I've done it. I've done it. Oh god damn it. Ah, there we go. I should be taking should be testing it. Oh no, I've only got nine luck now. Oof. So, I won. You step past the still bodies of the wolves and continue your journey through the swirling snow. The climb becomes steeper and the going is slow. The snow is beginning to fall very heavily, swirling around in the strong wind. A blizzard is starting. Let's dig a shelter in the snow. Oh no, I have to eat two provisions. Should have just continued. I keep warm. I oh, don't know what would happen if it actually continued. Anyway, so I've dug a dug a hole, little made a little igloo. An hour later, the blizzard's fine. Underneath an overhanging rock, you see a small wooden hut built against the side of the mountain. Its roof is piled high with snow and long icicles hang down from window ledges. You see a set of deep footprints leading from the hut up the side of the mountain. If you wish to enter the hut, I think I'll enter the hut. I think I'd rather follow the footprints, but I'd like to see what's inside the hut. The front door of the hut is frozen shut, and you have to batter it with your shoulder to open. There is only one room inside the hut containing the belongings of a fur trapper. Traps, furs and sacks are stacked in a corner of the room. A wooden bed, a table and chair and some cooking utensils show sign of recent use and the ashes in the fire are still warm. Okay. Woo! Good choice. The fire is soon roaring and crackling in the hearth. The heat of the flames radiates through your body and you revel in the warmth. The stew is delicious and you feel your strength returning. You gain three stamina points. By the way, don't think I'm just choosing things which I know work. I haven't read this book in well over ten years. I have no idea. Ten years at least? At least. At least. As you're about to leave the hut, you catch sight of some weapons. Let's take some additional weapons. You take a warhammer and a spear. Outside, again in the deep snow, you set off on your trek up the mountainside. Following the footprints in the snow. I lose one stamina. Ooh! Suddenly you hear the cry of a human voice followed by a ferocious roar. Not far ahead you see a fur trapper fighting for his life against a gigantic bear-like beast with long white fur and sharp teeth. Oh, I can add a bookmark and come back here. It's the killer beast you've been hunting. The abominable yeti. Ooh. You watch the unfortunate trapper being gashed by the Yeti's claws and falling face down in the snow. Incensed by the vicious attack, you scream at the Yeti and run through the snow to attack it. Am I carrying a spear? Yes, I am. Carefully, you heft your spear. I don't have frostbite in my sword arm. Ah, uh, I bet you, if I hadn't actually dug my little igloo, I would have got frostbite. Okay. Gripping the shaft tightly. Sorry, when did I start reading Fifty Shades? <laughs> you pull your arm back and hurl the spear at the snarling yeti. You roll the six. Is this good? The spear flies to the air and sh thuds into the yeti's shaggy chest. It roars in pain but does not fall. Clearly needed one to do down it. You quickly draw your sword to fight the enraged beast. Okay, fight on. You both miss. Okay. So skill plus my roll. Okay. I should hit him. Yeah. This is great. Have I? Yes. Oh, yes. He's dead. So dead. There we go. 
You kneel down beside the fur trapper and turn him over slowly. His eyes are barely open and blood trickles down from the corner of his mouth. The yeti has gouged deep wounds in his chest and you realise there is no hope of saving him. I wonder if I'd gone straight up there if we would have been able to maybe save him. Hmm. With a great effort, he reaches up and grabs you round the neck, pulling you down so that you can hear his dying words. He thanks you for trying to save him and insists on telling you his secret. In terrible pain, he struggles to whisper his story. He tells you that he has lived in the mountains for most of his life, hunting animals and trading the furs, but for the last five years he's been searching for the legendary crystal caves. These caves have been cut out of a glacier by the followers of the Snow Witch, a beautiful yet evil sorceress who is trying to use her dark powers to bring in an ice age so that she can rule supreme over the whole world. The entrance to the crystal caves is high upon this very mountain. It is open, but hidden by an illusion. The unfortunate fur trapper found about axe Accident. Only yesterday, when he saw one of the Snow Witch's warriors seemingly walk straight through an ice wall and disappear. The trapper left a piece of fur hanging over the entrance so they could find it again the next day. Sadly, the Yeti has put an end to his hopes. He asks you to enter the caves to slay the vile Snow Witch and leave her followers without their leader. There are legends about great treasures being frozen into the wall of the Snow Witch's lair which will provide ample reward. The fur trapper suddenly grips you hard and then falls back silent into the snow. He's dead. You cover him with snow before deciding what to do. Fifty gold pieces await if you return with evidence of the Yeti's death to Big Jim's son. But the thoughts of a quest through the crystal caves beneath the Ice Finger Mountains excites you, and you decide to set off to find them. And we'll leave it there. Let's add a bookmark. Ooh. Brilliant, you actually see the bookmark slipping in and everything. Uh, let's see my adventure sheet. So I've got 14 out of 19 stamina, I've got 8 provisions, a potion of strength. Uh, these are the weapons that I found. And it's got some info of my current quest, that's pretty decent actually. So yeah, this is Caverns of the Snow Witch, it was just available on Steam today. Um, and. If you've never read Caverns of Snow Witch or Fighting Fantasy, I thoroughly would recommend you do it. This is uh, an enhanced experience, obviously. It's just basically reading the book, except it does all the combat stuff for you. It does all the rolling for you. It keeps track of everything for you. Um, it's like Fighting Fantasy for the lazy. <laughs> but, yeah, I was excited when I saw it, and I'll be quite excited to finish this one off uh, myself, yeah. So feel free to subscribe for future videos like this and there's a couple of other options on the screen for you. Until next time, goodbye.